Okay, so we have the basic makings for our bed bug CO2 trap. And I want to take this opportunity to show the different types of yeast that you can buy. These are typically uh, the two ounce packets that you'll see in the store. You just want to make sure it's a dry, active yeast. And here's, here's a Red Star, probably a more well-known variety. But you want to look at the expiration date. A lot of stores keep these things on their shelves, and this stuff is usually not good if it's older than a year. So take the time, if you're going to go buy the yeast, make sure that it is within acceptable parameters. Another thing I want to show you is the use of a very cheap ceramic cup. Now this was purchased for a dollar here in Philadelphia from a Dollar General store. But the reason why I like to use the white coffee cups is because when you get something as small as a bed bug in it, I'm gonna use a piece of black plastic bag, but you can see how clearly that shows. Whereas if you use the shot glass or any other type of container, it would not be that apparent. But you can walk by your trap, just kind of look into the bottom of your cup and you can tell instantly whether or not an insect has crawled in there. Okay, I'm back with Trish and we are in North Philadelphia. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you that anybody can build these traps. And Trish has, I've given her maybe five minutes worth of training on this and she feels confident that she can put together the mixture that you're gonna to need to do about every two to three weeks to keep a viable CO2 bed bug trap. All right, let's go ahead and begin Trish. She's going to start by adding two tablespoons of sugar to a 12 ounce uh, glass that is filled halfway with lukewarm water. Then she's going to open her packet of yeast. This is your 2.4 ounce pack of yeast. She's going to mix that into that glass and she's going to stir it up really good. Now this is called proofing the yeast. And what this is doing is it's reintegrating that yeast capsule, uh, which is a fungus, it is rehydrating it and so you want to be gentle with it at this stage and that's why you want to use lukewarm water so you don't create thermal shock and kill the active yeast that is that organism that is in there now, this will take about 10 minutes but you'll see it'll start foaming and once that yeast is proofed then we will add it to a larger container containing about half a gallon or two quarts of lukewarm water and we will add an additional two cups of sugar to that mixture to finalize the process. Now this is the classic version of the CO, bed bug CO2 trap that was uh, originally invented by uh, Chang Lo Wang at the University of uh, Rutgers University in New Jersey and uh, a colleague of mine in Canada, Julian Nassau, helped perfect this formula. We, we uh, watered it down and made it so it will fit into a two liter bottle. But if you do this correctly, this formula will be a viable gas producing formula for about two to three weeks, as, as long as you keep the uh, lure bottle out of direct sunlight. Okay, we're All back. Right. And now you can see that the yeast, sugar, and water has now proved. There's a good frothy head on that. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna combine our two cups of sugar that we've already pre-measured with our other container of lukewarm water and Trish is going to pour that in there introducing that sugar to that lukewarm water and now she's going to go ahead and take her proof and add that and combine both of those and this is going to be our CO2 lure mixture Go ahead and stir that bad boy up. Yeah. And you'll know when you get it right because it'll start to look like lemonade. And it'll look like a, a yeasty Pilsner beer. All right. Okay, I think that's good enough. 
and we're going to go ahead and combine it to our bottle we have a funnel here where it's going to make it pouring a lot easier and we're going to pour that liquid almost all the way to the top but we're going to leave about two inches of gap and that gap is important because we're going to need to put our hose in there our tubing and that gap is going to allow the gas to accumulate before it pushes it out of that tube Right where the bottle starts to smooth out and straighten up, come out of that curve right there. So about two inches from the very top of the bottle, which is where we are right now. That's good. All right, now we're going to start crafting our tube and our uh, pitfall. Okay, so we're at the stage where we're going to put a hole in the very center of the top cap of one of these two liter bottles. Now what? Trish is using here is a regular drywall screw, a very sharp screw, and a screwdriver. And what she's going to do is she's going to open that hole using that her her uh, screwdriver to dr drive that screw into the cap. And she's making progress now, going through the center of the cap. Okay. Okay. Now what? Trish is doing now, yeah, she's, she's going to try to make that hole bigger by using a pair of scissors. She's just going to use one time. And what she's going to try to do is get it to be about a quarter of an inch in diameter. And the reason why is because I've got this airline tubing that we're going to use to siphon the gas off of the uh, formula. Okay. That is perfect. And we're going to use that to direct that into the pitfall. And so what I've got here is regular airline tubing. This is what you might find in a, in a pet supply store to keep the air in your aquarium. So you can go to any Walmart, we'll have this. I think it, this costs $3, but uh, airline tubing, 25 feet roll of it, that's uh, gonna be more than enough to construct three traps. I'm ready. Okay, all right, we're back. And what Trish is doing now, she's gonna cut off a section of this tubing. This is the airline tubing. It's going to get about two or three feet of it. That's good right there. About this much? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then she's going to connect that to the hole that she has made in the container, in the bottle, top of the cap of the bottle. And this is when she's going to find out whether or not the, her hole is big enough. And it looks, it looks like it's really good. That's a good tight fit. And of course, we'll add some glue to that to make that seal airtight. But as for now, that's sufficient. And the, what she's going to do now is she's going to prepare her pitfall. And like I demonstrated earlier, we're going to use a regular ceramic cup, white cup, coffee cup, that you can find at a Dollar General store for about a dollar. And these cups work exceptionally well because anything that gets in there of any color will stand out to you, it will be instantly obvious to you that a, a bug has entered your pitfall. And what she's using now is one inch athletic tape. This is also you can find at the Dollar General store. And she's going to leave an overlap of about a quarter of an inch. The idea behind this using the athletic tape is that bed bugs can crawl very well up items that are constructed out of carpet, fabric, wood, any pore surface they can get their hooks into like that and that looks good and what will happen they probably need a little bit more overlap than that but okay. but uh that's good enough um what what will happen is the bed bugs will sense the co2 that is coming out of the lure being directed by the tube into the pitfall and they will crawl up to it thinking that they're going to get a meal and what will happen is once they get over the lip of that 
ramp, that ascension platform, which, which we are now creating using this athletic tape, they will fall, gravity will pull them into the pitfall and they will be unable to get themselves out of it. And because they are not able to extricate themselves from the bottom of the pitfall, they will perish after about a day of spinning around. And uh, we're gonna put a little bit of c -max of dust in the very bottom of the pitfall to make it even more deadly. So this is how you are going to construct your average pitfall. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that you wrap your athletic tape and make sure that it extends all the way to the ground so that any bug tra traveling on the ground is gonna be able to make it up this ramp, get to the top of the pitfall, crawl over and be locked into that pitfall and die. 